Good morning, everyone. We'd like to, just before we start, ask you to suspend your belief. We are going to do a skit, so please play along with us. Um, picture it is one week before the Arnold P. Gold Symposium, and Paula and I are meeting to discuss what we're going to talk about in the three minutes that we have. So that is the, the uh, setup. <laughs> Hey Sophie. Hey Paula. Oh my gosh, I can't believe you're going in a week. Yeah, and I'm so glad we're able to present the work that we've done along with our colleague Susan Leaf and uh, Gilly Nevo Adler. I know, I am so appreciative to uh, Dr. Arnold Gold and Sandra Gold, the Foundation, the Research Institute, for bringing us all together. Um, and so, 30 page report. Uh, how are you going to summarize? The methods. What's the sound bite on that? Okay, so we did a <laughs> scoping review looking specifically at relationship centered care as a search term in health. And uh, we found 276 articles, and we finally distilled it down to actually 68 that looked at relationship centered care specifically in health. About 75% of those articles were conceptual and editorial and the other 25% were research. And what was really interesting is there was nothing about relationship-centered care before 1994, and then in 1994, there was a spike up to 1999, and then another spike about 10 years later, and then since then, there's been probably about 20 papers right. to date right, right. using that term. Yeah, so 94 was when the Pew Fetzer report came out where this new definition from patient-centered care to relationship-centered care was really kind of in, in public discourse that relationships really matter in healthcare, that personhood matters, our personhood, our patient's personhood, affect and emotion are important. Relationships don't occur in isolation, that we all live in complex, uh, with multiple relationships, multiple social roles, and that maintaining genuine relationships is morally valuable and, and really important. So um, more of a focus on process and context, I found, from the, the Fetzer report and this definition yeah. So what, what are we going to convey in terms of what's your sense of the one important thing that you took away from the review as the lead author? Thanks, Paul. Um, the one thing that was really important was this notion of moving beyond patient-centered care to relationship-centered care and, and the difference between patient-centered care to relationship-centered care. So relationship-centered care really honors the fact that our relationships with our colleagues, with our organization, with our community, with the family of the patient and the patient and ourselves actually influences care. Mm -hmm. So it's not only between the patient and the practitioner, it's everything else around it. Right. What did you think? Well, it's interesting because as a clinician um, and a teacher, I was thinking that it really moves from this biopsychosocial paradigm, which is holistic, but it's about otherness, where we're trying to formulate an etiological understanding of symptoms and suffering, yes, I'm going to use that word, um, <laughs> where, uh, you know, we try to understand the biopsychosocial influences where this is much more present and process-oriented. It's about, it's about we rather than us versus they and being alive to shared experiences, shared dilemmas, and shared opportunities in addressing uh, suffering and finding ways to, to manage and to be resilient in the, in the face of health challenges. So what about future research? Well, the review really showed that we needed to look more at um, our relationship with communities mm -hmm. and the communities that our patients live in, and also with families. There wasn't a lot of work on families. And also, um, you mentioned that one of the newer developments is this idea of our relationships with ourselves, so both as clinicians and healthcare providers, along with our <coughs> patients, and their relationships with their inner experience and not just these external factors. But in addition to that, we talked about um, translational and implementation research opportunities in order to really <coughs> scale up and address barriers like time and attitudinal barriers and contextual variables and drivers as well into account, which brings us into this opportunity for collaborating as a community of practitioners and to do advocacy work, making use of media and messaging in order to get into public discourse and influence policies and advance values of humanism in healthcare. So if we had to summarize our findings into one sentence. Yeah, I would say, as I think you would say, is that health happens between, between us. us. <laughs> 